Hey, it's Ryan from 2MinuteTennis.net, and in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to hit topspin on both a forehand and backhand. Please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. Even share this video with a friend, as those are the best ways to support this channel. Now, in this video, I'm gonna be using the Topspin Pro. It is an awesome product for both on-court and in-home practice. Uh, I am an affiliate, so you can check out my affiliate link in the description below. So there are four things you need to hit topspin reliably, effectively, and in a way that gives you confidence when you're out on the court hitting ground strokes. Those four things are racket speed, a closed racket face in the back, and I'll go through all these, a low to high swing, and a racket at contact that is vertical or close to vertical to send the ball over the net. So let me say those four, thing, th four things again. You need racket speed, so you need to swing sufficiently fast enough to hit spin but yet hit an effective ball. You need to tilt your strings down prior to contact. You wanna swing low to high from below contact to above contact, and you wanna make sure that at contact your racket is vertical. So let's first talk about racket speed. So racket speed in a way that's gonna help you produce a uh, a reliable and effective topspin is gonna come from a fer Ferris wheel swing. It's gonna come from a high, low, high swing. When you swing high, low, high, you swing in a way that stays within the dimensions of the court. You, when we go bowling, we go like this, right? We don't, we don't throw a bowling ball like this. And the reason is because it doesn't work within the, the alley, right? It doesn't work within the lane. It's not gonna keep the ball going toward our target. So it's the same thing in tennis. Believe it or not, a tennis court is actually almost three times wider than it is long. And when it comes to the amount of angle you have, it's less than 20 degrees. So we have to use a high, low, high swing to be as consistent as possible, but produce racket speed. See, a circle is the shape you can draw the fastest. Get a piece of paper and draw any shape, and I guarantee you, the circle is the one you can draw the fastest. Triangle, square, the circle produces speed or allows for acceleration. So what you need to make sure of is that you're using a high, low, high swing, using a circular swing, also known as the C swing. If you start using a C swing where from your ready position you turn high and then circle around, you're gonna get the racket speed you need to hit effective topspin. All right, tip number two to hit effective topspin on your ground strokes. And I'm gonna show you both the forehand and backhand here. We have to make sure that as a recreational player, this is gonna be huge for you. We have to make sure that the racket is closed before contact. Closing the racket means instead of the racket on edge, where if I had a coin, I placed it on the edge of the racket, that's called on edge. Closing the racket means we turn and tilt our strings down toward the ground. Anywhere from 30 to 45 degrees is fine. It'll vary based on the grip that you use. The more Western your grip, the more closed it'll be. The more Eastern, it'll be about 30 degrees. But getting the racket closed before contact is going to be the key to one of the other tips, which was having your racket face vertical. See, most players prior to hitting a forehand, most players who struggle with topspin, let me say it that way, most players who struggle with topspin have their racket vertical prior to hitting the ball. Well, when your racket is vertical and on edge behind you, when you swing to hit, it'll be open. It's just the nature of the pendulum of our shoulder movement. So as we swing, our racket ends up facing open. This is why players who learn to play tennis or beginning to play tennis, they often hit the ball over the fence because in their mind, they know that, you know, it's gonna make sense to get their racket flat at contact, vertical at contact, but they prepare with their racket vertical. The way you get a racket to face forward at contact is actually to tilt the strings down prior to contact. If you're a parent and you're working with your kids on learning how to hit uh, ground strokes, forehands and backhands and learning topspin, film your child and make sure that their strings are tilted down. Teach them to turn their palm toward the ground, right? That palm strings connection. Where the palm faces, that's where the strings are gonna face. Get them to feel their palm facing the ground. That way, when they get to the ball, their strings are facing forward when they swing up and they're gonna have a reliable topspin shot. All right, tip number three. 
We have to swing low to high. I would say low to high is one of the most commonly said things from coaches every day on courts all around the world, helping students learn how to play better tennis. Low to high is a very simple concept. When we hit the back of the ball, we have to be going from below contact to above contact. That's what's gonna get the ball to spin. Watch this in slow motion and watch very closely how my, react, my racket reacts to the ball. So as we're hitting the ball, we're wanting to hit the back of the ball, which is the idea of the vertical racket at contact. But we wanna make sure we're going from below the ball to above the ball. That's what's gonna get the ball to rotate. In that close up view of the racket and ball interaction, you saw the ball turn. That's the beauty of the Topspin Pro, is you actually get to see and feel Topspin when you're practicing at home, on the court, adults, kids. It's an awesome, awesome product. When we are striking the ball, we talked about the closed racket face, and this really comes down to then the, the fourth idea. We want to swing low to high, but you have to make sure that at contact, your racket is vertical or near vertical. Yes, can some pros get away with having their racket tilted a few degrees closed as they swing low to high? Yes, that's because of the immense amount of racket speed that they are producing. But even on a topspin lob, it's smart to actually have the racket slightly open. Now you have to make sure you swing up steeper than the angle of the racket to be able to get the top spin. And that's what's gonna get the ball to go as a lob over someone's head. But having the racket straight up and down at contact is gonna give you the consistency that you're looking for. So let's go over this on the forehand again and then we'll look at the backhand. We wanna make a circular swing at the bottom of the, for racket speed, at the bottom of the swing, make sure that our racket is closed, tilted down. Then we swing low to high and we're making sure that as we're swinging low to high, the racket is facing forward at contact, produce, producing the brushing effect up the back of the ball. That brings the ball down with the, the high pressure on the top of the ball and that ball just gets pushed down into the court. Watch me demonstrate a couple forehands here and then we'll go to the backhand. What's cool is I can actually keep the ball going. So that ball is still spinning. So when you practice on a top spin pro, you're just looking to keep that ball spinning the whole time. Making a circular swing, close my racket below the ball, brush low to high, vertical racket when I hit. Now the two-hander and one-hander are gonna use the same four ideas. Let's talk about the two-handed backhand first. You want to use the circular swing. You want the tip of the racket pointing up on the way back and then dropping. That keeps a continuous swing so you can build the speed on itself. When you use a C swing, the letter C swing, it helps you produce the most amount of racket speed. That racket speed is needed because when we're hitting the ball, we're allocating our racket speed into two things, ball movement and ball rotation. So you need sufficient racket speed, so you have enough racket speed to divvy up between the two. If you swing slowly and impart topspin, the ball doesn't have enough energy to go over the net. Sure, you put topspin on the ball, but even if it goes over, it lands super short and it's easily attacked. So you have to swing fast enough that you have enough racket speed to put both toward the ball speed and the ball rotation. Tip number two, do you remember what it is? Close the racket face prior to contact. Don't have your racket on its edge if you're looking to hit topspin. Tilt the strings down. So after you keep the tip of the racket up, you drop the racket and now the racket is tilted down. Anywhere from 30 degrees to 45 degrees is great. Then we're gonna swing from low to high and as we hit, we are brushing up the back of the ball. So watch this again, very close in slow motion, and you'll see my racket brush straight up the back. Again, my goal when I'm striking the ball is to get the ball to turn. And I'm gonna accomplish that by going from below contact to above contact. 
And when my racket for the fourth tip is straight up and down when I do that, that's when I hit a reliable ground stroke that can go high over the net to stay away from the net, but it has sufficient topspin to come down into the court. So you want the circular swing. At the bottom of the circular swing, you want the closed racket. So you can swing low to high and make sure that your racket is facing forward at contact. Here's what the two-handed backhand should look like. I'm just gonna keep that ball spinning. And on the one-handed backhand, you guessed it, same four things. You're gonna keep the tip up so that you have sufficient racket speed from the C swing, from the circular swing. At the bottom of the swing, you're gonna close your racket face. Look at Vavrinka prior to contact. His racket face is closed. When you close your racket face prior to contact and down below contact, you can then swing low to high, brushing up the back of the ball. But you don't want your racket open when you do that. So that means you can't have your racket on edge. Open at contact means your racket was on edge in the back. Closing the racket prior to hitting is what gives you the square racket against the back of the ball. So you can swing up but not be afraid the ball is going to go out. Again, watch this zoomed in view of a one-handed backhand brushing up the back of the ball. So right now I want you to grab your racket and I just want you to shadow swing some forehands and some backhands and make sure you have all four things if you're trying to demonstrate a topspin forehand. Demonstrate a circular swing so you can get racket speed. Demonstrate tilting your strings down below contact so you can swing low to high brushing up the back of the ball but getting your racket vertical at contact. If you've got the circular swing, the closed racket, the low to high swing with the vertical racket at contact, you're gonna gain confidence, win more matches, and play much better tennis. This is Ryan Reedy from 2MinuteTennis.net. You got this.